Identical twins are beautiful quirks of nature, perfect genetic copies of each other, with a bond so close it's as if they're telepathic. Understandably, twins, and even rarer, identical triplets, are magnets for curious scientists trying to answer that profound question. Is it nature or nurture that determines who we are? But one psychiatrist became so obsessed by his research, he engineered a truly heartless experiment. He separated sets of identical twins and triplets at birth and studied them as they grew up apart. They never even knew their siblings existed. But his cruelty was finally exposed when, in a one in a million chance, they found each other. I used to pretend that I had a twin because I was fascinated with twins. Imagine growing up thinking that even though you were surrounded by a loving family, something was missing. I thought everybody wanted a twin sister. I thought it was normal. What do you see? Not a best friend. Who is it there? Not a soulmate. In the but the most fundamental thing in your life. Another you, a mirror image, your identical twin. Anybody I knew who was a twin, I was just always fascinated by, like, and I, I was jealous, basically, like, that they had a twin and I didn't, and I just made one up. So I pretended and talked to my imaginary twin. I went to camp with twins, and I was so jealous of them, and I didn't understand why. And then as I got older, I would say, doesn't everybody want a twin? And my friends would be like, no. <laughs> I didn't want a twin. I didn't want to share a birthday. And I was like, oh, well, I did. How do you For the first 23 years of their lives, Ellen Carboni and Melanie Mertzel had no idea they really were identical twins nor did the families who adopted them as babies. Hey, so nice to see you. But their happiness in discovering each other turned to anger when it was revealed they had been deliberately separated as tiny infants, as part of a grotesque experiment designed by famous New York psychiatrist, Dr. Peter Neubauer. What do you two think of Peter Neubauer? Um. <laughs> selfish, <laughs> Satan, <laughs> we were identical. And he robbed us of our childhood. He robbed Altered us our of lives. our closeness. Altered our lives. He took away something fr from us that we will never, ever, ever experience or have. Or get back. In our entire lives. And they were not alone. And I said, this is like Nazi shit. Other twins, even triplets, were ripped apart in the name of science. And of like reality hitting like a tidal wave. We were a science experiment. These people split us up and studied us like lab rats. The experiment started in the 1960s at the Louise Wise Adoption Agency in New York. Here, babies were adopted out to good Jewish families. Identical twins, Ellen and Melanie, were born in May 1966, but neither their biological mother nor the families who adopted them had any idea they were guinea pigs in a secret experiment. Louise Wise actually called my mom and said that we will give you another baby if you let us do studies on how a third child adapts in a household. So my mom was like, oh, OK, I'll do anything. I want another baby. And how old were you at the time? My mom says three months. And so she was allowed to do that, to take you away on the basis that it was a, what, normal child development study? Right, exactly. So the whole thing was a sham to both sets of your parents. They Correct. had no idea. None. What was the Neubauer study trying to achieve? Dr. Peter Neubauer was very interested in questions of nature and nurture. To what extent are we products of our genes and to what extent are we products of our environment? Professor Nancy Siegel is one of the world's leading experts on twins. 
and the role genetics and the environment play in shaping who we are. In the New Bauer study, there was a purposeful separation, an intentional separation of the twins. He got all of his data in real time, which in many ways is the ideal experiment, but it's also the forbidden experiment. In total, four pairs of identical twins and one set of triplets were all split and sent to separate homes so they could be studied for their differences and similarities as they grew up. Do both of you remember being studied and filmed and questioned when you were oh, yeah. little girls at home as part of the New Bauer study? Absolutely. I hated it. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the only twin, apparently, in the whole study that loved it. I hated it. <laughs> it was torture. I had fun. Why did you love it? Probably because I was third child and kind of, you know, pushed aside and it was someone who came to my house. They visited me, they hung out with me, they played with me. Dr. Neubauer's researchers would arrive to test, film and play with the children, never divulging the dark secret behind their work. I mean, these researchers were taking, obviously, hospitality from your adoptive parents in their home and still keeping this horrible secret. It's pretty average performance, isn't it? Lying to everyone. Mm -hmm. Acting like they were doing it for our benefit, but it was for their benefit, not ours. Mm -hmm. We would have been the same if we were raised together. It wasn't just unethical, it was cruel. They may have lived their whole lives not knowing each other existed, but for luck and mistaken identity. 30 years ago, Mel was working at her parents' restaurant, the International House of Pancakes in Brooklyn, New York. As I understand it, the key to you two meeting, finally knowing that you were twins, came down to a very persistent auntie. Yes. Tell me about so that. So she came, she came into my parents' restaurant and I was working and how I remember, she, uh, she saw me and couldn't understand why I didn't recognize her. And um, when I went over to her table, she asked me if I was adopted. And I said, no, I don't know you. You know, I don't go around saying that information. Later that day, Melanie said, Mom, could I be a twin? And the mother said, don't be ridiculous. There's no way you're a twin. And the whole situation was forgotten. But Ellen's aunt did not forget it. And then a week or two later, she came in with a picture of Ellen. But she didn't present it to me. She presented it to my boyfriend, who was working with me at the time. And my boyfriend, he knew I was adopted. So he showed me the picture. And he said, that's you. And I said, that is not me. And he said, yes, that's you. And I said, don't tell me who I am. I know who I am. <laughs> and uh, then I went over to the table and she said, do you want to speak with her? And I said, yeah. When I went home from work that day, I called Ellen. And when I heard her voice, I was like, oh, my God, you sound just like me. And then we just started talking about everything. Day one, when we first met. Melanie and Ellen were 23 years old at the time they discovered each other existed. Was there any hesitation? I mean, did you hit it off straight away? Was it that quick? Yeah, because when we spoke on the phone, we compared everything that we liked, our birthdays, this, that, and the other thing, the studies. Uh, people came to my house and tested me. Oh, they came to my house and tested me. Oh, well, you know, I like this and I hate this and everything was very, and then I'm a lefty, she's a righty, her dimple's on the left side, mine's on the right side. So we were like, wow, we're mirror images. You threw up. I did. Before we met. Came. Yep. I was so nervous before you came, I threw up. I was like, I'm meeting this person who I've only talked to. I know that, um, like, like, as she said, when she called, our voices were identical, and then we both laughed about it, and our laughs were identical. And I was just like, this was just so weird. You know, it was like, what I've always dreamed of and wanted is like a reality. I couldn't believe that it was happening. Um, 
I didn't have a sister. I always wanted a sister. And here I had a sister, like instantly. And not only just a sister, but an identical twin. I feel like when we found each other, just due to like circumstances in our families, we couldn't be as close. I wanted what they had and I didn't get that. When we met, Ellen was living with her boyfriend in Jersey and I was dating my boyfriend in Brooklyn. We couldn't bond like they did. We had our lives already and it doesn't sound like a, you know, big difference in age, but boys at 18, you know, and girls at 23 is more of a big difference than just five years. You know what I mean? So for Melanie and Ellen, the happiness of finding each other would eventually be soured by the fact that even though they now had their other half, they were in reality strangers, never learning to be sisters. And that created real tension. She should have been the closest person to me in the world, and she wasn't. Do you feel as though you've been robbed, Melanie, of not being able to grow up together? Absolutely, yes, yes. All the siblings in the New Bauer study agree with Melanie. And twin expert, Professor Nancy Siegel, maintains the damage done by being separated at birth was in fact immeasurable. Here they've been deprived of what could have been the most important relationship in their lives. You know, Ellen told me the person I should have been closest to, I never knew. And I think that encapsulates it absolutely perfectly. I think in that one line, she speaks for all the twins and the triplets. And you can't make up for all the years, Liam. You cannot. You cannot make up for those lost years. It's impossible. I think we look identical there. <laughs> wow. Look at me. Pigtails, the same. 54-year-old identical twin sisters, Ellen Carboni and Melanie Mertzel, only have photos to show each other about the first 23 years spent growing up apart. This is my best friend growing up, whose name was Melanie, and everyone used to call us Mel and Al. And even when they discovered each other... Oh, love the hair. ...learning the truth about their forced separation was impossible for the girls and the parents who adopted them. They were angry because they would have loved to have more children and they would have taken us both. Um, they were confused about, you know, what transpired, like why, you know, they would even do such a thing. I suspect your adoptive parents would have also been uh, very angry that they were duped by the Louise Wise Agency. Oh yeah, my parents still had no idea, you know, that we were actually used basically as human guinea pigs for their research. We were human guinea pigs. Like we were treated like, not like humans, but like animals. The adoption agency didn't give up that information. No, they after, still lied. Even after you discovered that you were twins. For me, they just confirmed that you were confirmed a twin. Confirmed that we were twins, that's it. That was it. No more information. No records, no nothing. Still kept the lie. And according to twins expert, Professor Nancy Siegel, the lies started shortly after the babies were born and put up for adoption by the Louise Wise Agency. They were not given an option to have them stay together. But I can tell you, Liam, that I know of at least two or three of the parents of the twins I've talked to who would have loved raising twins. In fact, one family asked for twins twice. From your point of view, what psychological damage do you think was done by separating the twins at birth? These individuals were deprived of what could have been the closest of human social relationships. And to know that you could have had that is devastating. It's horrible, horrible, horrible. And I was very, very shy as a child. And Same I clung here. to my mother like I would hold on to her leg, like when we went out anywhere. And I feel like that's because I was missing my other half, basically. Making matters worse, no scientific paper 
was ever published by Dr. Neubauer about his study. All that sadness, all that damage, all that deception, and for what? It looks pretty much like for nothing. It really does seem that the twins' suffering and the suffering of their parents and their siblings and everyone who knows them was really for nothing. There is no real end product here, nothing that we can say that we've learned. We've only learned how not to do research. Most cruelly, by Dr. Neubauer's own orders before his death in 2008, the records of their own early lives are kept secret, even from the twins themselves although Ellen and Melanie are fighting for access. You think you deserve to see those records? Of course, it's my, it's my life. You, could, you shouldn't hide my life from me. Like, the fact that it was never publicized is like, really? Because you did it all for nothing then? We, so I, we describe I, him as a Nazi, honestly. So I, I think that he was trying to play God and try to see if, it, if, again, if it was genetics or if it was how you're raised, your environment. So what molds you to be the person you are? If Neubauer was looking for that answer to that incredible question of nature versus nurture, what's your answer? Both. Both. It's both. Hello, I'm Liam Bartlett. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.